into the agenda. The first item uh, for discussion is item 301, case, it, case 18E0138, which is the matter of electric vehicle supply presented by Bridget Roby, um, Assistant Counsel. Chris Graves, our Principal Economist, um, is available for questions. Bridget, please begin. Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. The order before you today institutes a proceeding on motion of the Commission regarding electric vehicle supply equipment and infrastructure to consider the roles of New York's electric utilities when encouraging greater penetration of electric vehicles and the electric vehicle supply equipment throughout the state. In order to meet the state's state energy plan's targets of reducing greenhouse gas emissions 40% below 1990 levels by 2030 and 80% below 1990 levels by 2050, the state's transportation sector must be electrified. Through this proceeding, the Commission will consider cost-effective ways to build electric vehicle supply equipment and infrastructure and determine whether utility tariff changes will be needed in addition to those already being considered for residential customers to accommodate and promote the deployment of electric vehicles. Even at low penetration rates, the locations of charging stations is an important consideration that will be collaboratively addressed here. The proceeding will also investigate the characteristics of electric vehicle charging systems and how those systems might facilitate electric vehicle participation as a distributed energy resource in a manner not yet captured by the Reforming the Energy Vision Initiative. This proceeding builds upon, but it does not duplicate the ongoing REV efforts, such as the proposed EV readiness fr framework, pardon me, filed by the Joint Utilities as part of their Supplemental Distributed System Implementation Plan. The proceeding similarly supports ongoing utility initiatives, such as those approved in Con Edison and Niagara Mohawks, most recent orders approving their rate plans, and that proposed in the recently filed Central Hudson Joint Proposal. By this order, <coughs> excuse me, by this order, the Commission directs the Department of Public Service staff to convene a technical conference and obtain stakeholder input to identify and address what immediate and long-term actions will best support electric vehicle market growth. Quickly following the technical conference, the Commission directs staff to issue a white paper that will address a range of topics relating to electric vehicles and electric vehicle supply equipment based on stakeholder input. All the stakeholders will be invited to comment on staff's recommendations once filed so that the Commission may consider all feedback before making a determination in this proceeding. If there are any questions, Chris Graves of the Office of Markets and Regulatory Economics and I are available to take questions. Thank you, Bridget. Um, I view this institution of a proceeding as timely, since electric vehicles are coming of their own momentum as manufacturers and as customers shift their preferences. And I think instituting this proceeding is important because we need a framework that will get this right with respect to the costs, the benefits, and the issues for the distribution grid um, that arise out of the penetration of electric vehicles um, and with respect to the role, whatever that is, that utilities could potentially play roles that need to be good for New Yorkers and for customers. So I support this um, proceeding that is about developing the understanding that we need uh, as the basis for recommendations and as the basis for uh, inviting and benefiting from widespread stakeholder and expert commentary. Are there any comments or questions from my fellow commissioners? Commissioner Sayre. There's a classic chicken and egg problem with the move to electric vehicles. People and companies don't want to buy the vehicles if charging stations are not sufficiently available and convenient but companies don't want to invest in charging stations if there aren't enough electric vehicles on the road to support them. Now, we can't solve that conundrum at the PSC, at least not entirely, but we can help make it easier and more economical. 
and stimulate this market, which is critically important, in my view, for reaching the state energy plan's targets for reducing carbon emissions. There are a lot of thorny issues here, uh, several of which the chair just mentioned, the extent to which we should allow utilities into the charging station market, and most important, I think, for us is how we can make these new electric vehicles and facilities benefit the electric grid as well as the environment. We also have to keep in mind constantly how we can protect non-participating ratepayers from any undue subsidies for those who buy the electric vehicles. This item appropriately starts a stakeholder process followed by a staff white paper followed by a notice and comment process for all of these and other issues related to EVs. I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Commissioner Berman. I wasn't on. Commissioner Berman. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I have um, spent quite a bit of time in um, being reflective on what the need was for this proceeding to move forward um, at this time. I'm very cognizant of the fact that um, we have um, been involved in uh, looking at uh, EV uh, uh, across the state, um, not just since um, 2013 uh, and when the MOU was signed, but um, even before that um, and, and uh, many years before that uh, being involved in it. Um, and um, looking at it, uh, and obviously one of the inflection points was the VW settlement uh, and what that may mean. Um, so for me, it's what's the role of the regulators uh, and state regulators now in helping to move forward um, in a uh, thoughtful way um, the appropriateness uh, of um, uh, uh, EVs. And New York, like other states um, and the nation, um, and, and frankly, um, internationally, are undergoing significant changes uh, in the energy sector. Um, and due to technolo technology innovations and public policies and market forces and other factors, mm -hmm. we're moving towards um, a cleaner and more distributed grid. Uh, and um, we are uh, focused on consumers having um, more of a uh, role and looking at um, uh, being more active and uh, helping to uh, having more of affordability. Uh, and so for me, I'm also cognizant of the fact that um, we've had many in, uh, inflection points, um, DER um, being one of them, uh, energy storage, rooftop solar, and uh, the list goes on. And with new technological innovations, um, the, we will uh, have our challenges uh, as well as our opportunities. Um, and so for us, it's to focus on what our role is, not just at the state level, um, but uh, in a way um, that works uh, and is in alignment um, at both the state and the federal level and doesn't get sort of sucked into the shiny objects um, but also doesn't get um, caught up in being afraid in moving forward in a thoughtful way and helping um, keeping in mind um, our overall role. So for me, um, I do think it's appropriate to start this proceeding, um, but I do think that we need to be cognizant of our alignment, our alignment with um, other proceedings that are going on um, at the state level as well as at the federal level. And also not um, seeing this as um, meaning that electrification is the be all and end all um, because we have many um, questions that still need to be answered. How does this uh, fit into the overall picture from a resiliency and reliability perspective. What is the uh, appropriate penetration? How does this fit in uh, to um, um, 
looking at it from a cost and affordability perspective. Um, how does this fit in to um, our overall um, state uh, policies, um, not just for the 2015 state energy plan, um, but to uh, the state energy plan for the future, the 2019 one, uh, the ones after that, uh, and making sure that we're moving forward in a thoughtful way that is not focused on just the current um, public policy that may be, but really can have lasting impact on what our uh, core objectives are on safe and reliable service uh, and protecting um, the grid uh, for um, future as well. So some of my um, uh, focus really is on being cognizant of the fact that um, we can't look at this in a vacuum uh, and we need to um, look at it from an alignment perspective um, and that we need to be cognizant of that when we do change one part of our energy grid, um, whether it is um, here um, with looking at electrification, um, we also um, cause disruption, good or bad, um, in some ways to other parts and the whole. And so we need to look at that uh, and be cognizant of that. Um, that goes along with looking at technology uh, and focusing on uh, some of that. You know, we looked at, we've seen that when we looked at net metering and just solely focused on net metering and some disruptions that that's caused. Um, looking at it from the perspective of um, trying to fix rate designs and seeing um, that there are other concerns with business models. Um, and also, how does this fit um, in the overall picture of um, electric and, um, and uh, natural gas uh, and the coordination between that? Um, how does this also complement um, the DEC proceedings um, that are going on and the comments that are coming in with that? How does this fit with the ongoing um, uh, um, developments that are happening with the working groups uh, that are uh, um, uh, being, co um, being uh, stakeholder groups uh, that are happening across the state um, and outside of the state on transportation um, that, that are focused on electrification, but also outside of that, um, how will this work? Um, we've seen how um, if we just do it in isolation, um, we may wind up um, uh, causing um, problems and then have to um, pivot and um, um, try to fix uh, things that we um, forgot to bring into the equation uh, and need to um, take a closer look at. So I'd like us, when we move forward, to not think that um, this is an easy road, um, but also to keep in mind that um, we need to look very holistically and focus on the alignment uh, of the bigger picture and the whole uh, and work towards what that transition will be and what our role as a regulator is uh, and not get caught up in the shiny objects but really focused on the alignment and our uh, focus on um, uh, our core objective regulators um, and looking how it should match up and keeping in mind also that some of the, the true uh, information that is needed is the data um, and uh, uh, that needs to come in in terms of um, the um, the replacement uh, issues, um, the infrastructure issues that are needed, and what that may mean from a penetration um, perspective, uh, and some of those core um, uh, forecasting uh, models that will need to be there, um, and so those things are very important um, to get right, 
uh, and to have true analysis on um, the costs and the projections um, are very, very key um, and, and critical uh, and to look at that um, and also what exactly um, will be coming from um, other avenues uh, from whether it's the VW settlement or others and what that may mean in terms of future costs and future um, impacts um, that may need to be put in uh, to the system and that how that may trigger disruptions to other uh, systems and other changes that may need to be done um, on that. Those, all of those sort of side issues are very, very important. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Alisi. Thank you. So, with that, we will proceed to move on this item, item 301. My vote is in favor of the recommendation to institute a proceeding to encourage, encourage greater penetration of electric vehicles and electric vehicle supply equipment in New York State, as described. Commissioner Sayre, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Berman, how do you vote? I concur. Commissioner Alisi, how do you vote? Yes. The item is approved and the recommendation is adopted. We move now to item 303. We're doing a little bit of numerical leapfrogging. Um, but item 303, K17E0814, is also an EV-related item. And it is the tariff filing by the Consolidated Edison Company of New York to modify its electric tariff to expand the scope of its economic development business incentive rate to include an electric vehicle quick charging station program presented by Marianne Sorrentino. Acting Chief Electric Rates and Tariffs. Chris Graves remains available for questions. Marianne, please begin. Good morning, everyone. And commissioners. Item 303 is a draft order addressing a tariff filing made by Consolidated Edison. In its tariff filing, Con Edison proposes to include an electric vehicle quick charging station component in its business incentive rate program. The Business Incentive Rate Program offers discounted delivery rates to large general service customers and is intended to attract and retain businesses and jobs in New York City and Westchester County. The current Business Incentive Rate discount is either 34 or 39 percent, depending on the delivery service rate. Con Ed's proposal is intended to mitigate the high cost of operating EV charging stations in an immature market with low station utilization. Therefore, Con Ed proposes that the EV quick charging station program be in place for a period of seven years. The company's business incentive rate is available to 425 megawatts of load. As proposed, 30 of the 425 megawatts would be available for the EV quick charging station program. The delivery rate discount would be available to owners of newly constructed EV quick charging stations with a minimum aggregate charging capability of 100 kilowatts and a maximum aggregate demand of 2 megawatts. Additionally, the quick charging station must be publicly accessible and must receive an economic incentive from other government authorities. Delivery service to EV quick charging stations will provide a new revenue opportunity for electric utilities and therefore existing electric ratepayers will experience financial benefits. Comments on the filing were received from Tesla consumer power advocates, the City of New York, and NYSERDA. Tesla requests that the Commission consider waiving the requirement to receive economic incentives from other government authorities. They explain gaining eligibility for the business incentive rate program may be difficult given the lapse of the Federal Alternative Fuel Station tax credit. Consumer power advocate proposes that the discount be available to non-publicly accessible charging stations. The City of New York and NYSERDA are supportive of the filing. The City indicated that the EV quick charging station program will complement its efforts in increasing access to quick charging infrastructure and explained it is determining how it can best use a combination of $20 million in capital funding already allocated to quick charging hubs and future funding allocations to meet the governmental economic incentive requirement. 
NYSERDA indicated that Con Ed's program, coupled with NYSERDA's incentives, will likely achieve the near-term economics necessary for greater uptake and installation of quick charging stations. The Con Ed EV quick charging station program should be implemented independent of the new generic EV proceeding, proceeding giving time and sensitivity. Volkswagen Group, Volkswagen Group of America, through its nonprofit subsidiary, Electrify America, will invest $2 billion over a 10-year period in zero emission vehicle infrastructure, education, and support for increased adoption of ZEV technology in the United States as part of agreement to settle allegations of violations of the Clean Air Act. Of the $2 billion, $800 million is dedicated to California, and $1.2 billion will be spent outside of California. The $1.2 billion commitment is being spent in $300 million increments over four 30-month cycles. Cycle 1 of Electrify America began in 2017 and provides for approximately $250 million in funding for EV charging station infrastructure. The New York City metropolitan area was selected as one of 17 metro areas where Electrify America will concentrate Cycle 1 investments. Delaying implementation of the Con Ed EV quick charging station program would result in decreased uptake and a missed opportunity to leverage the business incentive rate to maximize new investment in Con Ed's territory. The draft order adopts the EV quick charging station program as proposed by Con Ed. This concludes my presentation, and Chris and I are available for questions. Thank you, Marianne. This strikes me as a pragmatic, reasonable, size-limited proposal uh, with appropriate requirements on accessibility, et cetera, of the infrastructure. Um, it's straightforward to implement, and it poses no foreseeable conflict with um, any other initiatives that we're contemplating, um, including item 301, which we just discussed and approved. So to me, it makes sense. I also find that it is timely, uh, given uh, the fact that it is uh, foundational to um, making the New York metro area eligible uh, for, these, uh, for these meaningful Volkswagen funds. So I'm going to be in favor of this item. Commissioner Sayre. You're not a, you're on. I spoke earlier. Uh, about the electric vehicle chicken and egg problem and the issue of what utilities should be permitted to do with respect to charging stations. This item, in my view, is in the nature of a toe in the water to see how one form of utility participation, here being discounts for quick chargers, uh, with third parties actually installing and, and operating the chargers, is going to work. And I hope it works. I, I hope it, it attracts a lot of market players. And it looks like we have a good shot at at least getting participation by Volkswagen. But whether it works or it doesn't, the non-participating ratepayers are protected. If nobody shows up to benefit from the discounts, then it's no harm, no foul, and we'll have to try something else. But if, on the other hand, the program is fully subscribed, despite these discounts, the additional revenues that Con Ed will get from the charging companies will exceed the additional expenses, which actually benefits the non-participating ratepayers by reducing Con Ed's revenue requirement. So this is an item, in my view, with minimal risk and some significant potential benefits. So I'm very pleased to support it. Thank you. Commissioner Berman. Um, I very much disagree. Uh, I think we're oversimplifying the issues here. I don't understand how this is not in um, conflict with, with moving forward at this time. Are we saying that failure to act now is putting, is going to cause us to not be able to get the VW settlement monies in the New York City area? Is that what we're saying? Because there's nothing in the record to, to say that we need this for the VW settlement monies. <laughs> this, uh, this isn't needed to get the um, Volkswagen settlement money. 
Um, but what happens is you're able to leverage the money that um, Electrify America wants to invest in the New York metropolitan area to get more stations built so you have a bigger bang for the buck and more benefit. Why are we not having something in the record that says, uh, regulator, we would like this to be approved because we are trying to leverage the money with the, the, that's coming with the VW settlement money. It's a vacuum. So as it relates to the VW settlement money and the approval here, there's nothing in the record that is tying it for me to feel comfortable on the record to say it is necessary for me on the record to, to say it's necessary at this time to do that. We have an open proceeding that we just started, instituting a proceeding on EV. And we have a second proceeding that's a petition that was just made by NIPA and others that in it mentions this, this proceeding, this Con Ed BIR, and talks about um, how it's aligned and again, it's a 43-page petition that NIPA has read, and I haven't gone through it, but it mentions this um, Con Ed BIR. So all of that has to get pro has happened and processed and, and relevant and weighed in not only to the proceeding that we just opened, but this. So I'm having a disconnect to understand how this relates to why it's necessary at this time for us to adopt a seven-year tariff on this when we're not supposed to be um, blindly going forward in determining the utility role. So unless, unless I'm harming the monies for the VW settlement, I'm just trying to figure out, because I can only go with what's on the record. And this, this was a question that I did ask about the VW settlement. This is not, I'm not blindsiding you at session here. We talked about my need to know on the record about this. So I, I think that the record supports the filing as proposed by Con Ed, independent of the um, settlement. It, it is a rate discount whereby all customers served under the BIR are charged at the marginal rate. Um, so there will be no negative impact on existing ratepayers. Yeah, Commissioner, can I add to that? Warren Myers, Director of Market and Regulatory Economics. Um, this is a very specific program that to me is very consistent with all of our economic development flex rate programs that have been around for years and years. This is a way, as uh, Commissioner Sayer said, to try to attract load that otherwise would not come to the electric util utility at a cost that it will contribute to revenue requirement above the incremental cost cause. The um, extra information that staff brought to you about the VW settlement was just I. I guess I consider it on the record now, um, and I don't think that it's a very controversial fact. To uh, I think Marianne laid out the, the program to you, and you can conclude whether um, that's an extra persuasive point. But to me, this is right down the middle of the plate for all of our flex rate type programs. Okay, thank you. So let us just go forward with right now we have this BIR potential petition, or actually not, it's a tariff filing asking for this. And this would be a seven year tariff. And part of the issue is in here it says that there would be, if it was fully subscribed, it would support over 85,000 electric vehicles by the end of the seven year program. Now is that 
85,000 electric vehicles from a replacement perspective, or would that be new electric vehicles? So is the, is the incentive to get folks off of their current vehicles? The 85,000 vehicles aren't differentiated as new or replacement. Okay. All right. I guess for me, the question is, what is the need to do this now rather than some of the issue for moving it into the proceeding, especially since in NIPA's petition, they talk about looking at rate design and they talk about the business incentive rate. And I'm just trying to figure out, especially as it relates to the VW settlement and the comments on that are out there in DEC and the ongoing dialogue on what the appropriate, um, uh, where the appropriate money should be spent. And since in this, um, in this uh, tariff filing, um, there's also focused on economic incentives, would also be leveraging not just um, this BIR, but also would be uh, potentially uh, focused on uh, looking at federal, state, and local um, uh, grants that might come as well. So my understanding of the NIPA petition is for expanded eligibility of this incentive to a non-demand metered service class, or non-demand build service class, I should say. Um, I think that the impetus behind acting on this now is the timing sensitivity of getting more vehicles on the road at really n no cost to Con Ed's existing electric rate payers. Okay. And what about um, Con Ed's uh, pilot program on EVs? Have we had any feedback on where, where that is? Which program are you yeah. talking about? They have several programs. They have a Fleet Karma project um, that works with residential customers. Um, they have um, some other pilot projects that they're doing with um, electrifying buses. Um, and so they've been doing outreach and working with um, customers and, you know, the city and um, a lot of the key players in this for a couple of years now. And so this, this proposal grew out of that, of trying to get the economics of the DC fast chargers to work better. Right. So my issue is I'm not opposed to true economic development programs that will work and will help uh, in the long run from an um, effectiveness. It's about the measurement and the verification and what is helping us in um, doing uh, true uh, good uh, energy regulation. Um, my concern is that um, we have uh, uh, talked about a number of different um, programs that we have uh, looked at, including um, EVs. Uh, we have a whole host of them. Uh, and part of my concern, which I have um, um, been um, pretty consistent on is uh, the need to be aligned and look at these things holistically. So I don't want to just do things in a vacuum. So when we start um, one proceeding um, and then I'm looking at uh, approving another proceeding, which on its face may be a very good one and may be appropriate, um, it's important to me that we have a whole record that is, uh, has all the information. And so one of the things that's, in my mind, missing from this is the pieces, the other pieces of the puzzle. What does it mean in terms of how much money will, will might be here from the VW settlement? Um, how much other leveraging of state and local and, and federal dollars may go into that? What will it mean from a penetration perspective 
uh, if we are going to be, if it is fully subscribed to 85,000 over the seven years, what does that look like, 85,000 electric vehicles? While that may not be a lot um, in the whole footprint of uh, Con Ed's territory, I would like to see how that matches up uh, across the whole footprint. Are we talking replacement? Um, are we talking new? Um, are we talking when we look at the other pilots, um, when we're talking EVs with the other pilot programs that are going on with the buses? Um, what are we talking about when we look at other uh, grant programs that are being done? Um, and how does it match up, not just with electrification, um, but other things that we may be doing um, uh, with uh, microgrids um, and and uh, you know um, just in general uh, as it matches up uh, on our uh, energy regulation uh, and again what does that mean from our load perspective uh, and what may may be needing to do uh, to make sure that we are appropriately um, providing safe and reliable um, service. So those are the things that I care about. And then getting back to, is the time right to do it now? Is it problematic if we wait? Um, and my trigger point is, it doesn't make sense for me to say yes to this at this point when we just instituted a proceeding and when I read the petition that NIPA had and they mentioned this, while they mentioned it positively, it made me question if I had all my facts and then when I didn't understand exactly what was happening with the VW settlement, it caused me to be concerned because I can only go with what's on the record. So I'm explaining to you why this information is necessary for me to be comfortable in making um, uh, um, you know, what I believe is the right choice in moving forward. So I'm going to be voting no um, without prejudice for it to come back to us. Um, but I, I don't feel comfortable that I have all the information at this time to make uh, the decision to move forward. And I'm also concerned why we would do this as a seven-year uh, tariff um, at this time and be locked in. Why this rather than um, what seems to be um, having been done through other um, uh, rev pilots and other things, why the ch decision here was to do it through this. Was there any discussion on doing it as a as a rev pilot, or again, what what information from the rev EV pilots um, was indicating, if anything, any positives or negatives from the EV rev pilots is in appropriate information to have, and that we can see in the in the uh, proceeding that we have in three hundred one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Me. Thank you, Commissioner Berman. Commissioner Lisi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In, uh, in my previous life, I chaired the Committee on Economic Development. And it uh, goes without saying that a number of um, economic incentives uh, pass through uh, our processes. And uh, it never bothered me to say no to a bad idea, but it always bothered me uh, when we would say no to something that was a good idea, or at least an idea that would offer potential for a good outcome. Um, I think this offers the potential for a good outcome, and uh, I'd be supportive of uh, whatever economic incentives would be forthcoming to help promote this. Um, to say the least, uh, if it frees local taxpayers, the ratepayers, uh, from any worry, that's a benefit. Uh, there's a universal benefit to the clean air that would come from a program like this that will hopefully grow. And uh, it'll bring us closer to our ultimate goals of clean air. So I'm going to support this, uh, and I think that it's an appropriate uh, proposal. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> so with that, we will move to a vote on item 303. My vote is in favor of the recommendation to approve Con Edison 
Consolidated Edison Company of New York's uh, tariff filing to implement an electric vehicle quick charging station program as described. Commissioner Sayre, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Berman, how do you vote? No, without prejudice. Commissioner Alisi, how do you vote? Yes. The item is approved and the recommendation is adopted. So we'll new, move now to item 302, back from 303, uh, case 18E0018 et al., which are the proposed amendments to the New York State Standardized Interconnection Requirements, SIR, for small distributed generators. Presented by Tammy Mitchell, Deputy Director for Electric. Bridget Wilby, Assistant Counsel, remain, remains here and is available for questions. Tammy, please begin. Good morning, Chair Rhodes and Commissioners. Last September, as part of the Value of Distributed Energy Resources, or VEDER, implementation order, the Commission directed staff to consider whether any changes to the New York State Standardized Interconnection Rules, or SIR, were needed to address two issues. One, the integration of battery storage into the interconnection process. And second, the possible impact of extending value stack compensation to larger resources up to 5 megawatts. As the Commission directed, staff worked with the utilities and project developers in the interconnection policy and technical working groups on these two issues and developed the recommendations. These recommendations were included in staff's December filing, in this case, along with other proposed modifications. In response to staff's proposal, the utilities and developers proposed additional modifications to the SIR. The draft order and revised SIR before you address both the original staff filing and the stakeholders' proposals related to the SIR. On the storage issue, the revised SIR now includes specific rules for interconnecting distributed generation projects paired with energy storage systems, as well as standalone storage systems operating in parallel with the distribution system. The developers have the flexibility under these rules to propose the configurations and operating modes that they determine are most economic. The only limitation imposed is an overall requirement that neither the distributed generator nor the storage system may exceed 5 megawatts AC and the exported energy of a hybrid project may not exceed that cap. On the project size issue, the order notes that the current SIR already permits interconnections up to 5 megawatts. The staff filing did not identify any inadequacies in the interconnection rules as they exist today. With the change in commission compensation policy, however, staff recommends adding rules allowing smaller projects in the queue to combine up to the 5 megawatt cap to reduce development costs. The draft order and revised SIR would adopt this recommendation. There are also several changes in the new SIR that are not direct, directly related to the VD, VDER implementation order directives. These include modifications to the technical screening criteria, which staff recommends as an improvement that will result in a more efficient preliminary technical evaluation process while ensuring the safety and reliability of the electric system. This has been a significant focus of the Interconnection Technical Working Group. Other changes to the contracting and construction scheduling rules are designed to ensure a developer understands both the utility project costs and the utility schedule for its part of the construction work at the same time the developer signs the interconnection contract. The order also includes suggestions made by stakeholders in their comments on the staff filing. Among these, the revised SIR adopts proposals to extend the time frame in which project developers are required to make progress payments to allow developers to manage delays in local permitting. In addition, staff recommends adopting the stakeholders' proposal to require distributed resources to maintain commercial general liability insurance. As these systems become more dispersed across the distribution system and increase in size, there is a need to protect ratepayers from potential third-party risk, which can be mitigated through insurance. Lastly, the order directs staff to add consideration of electric vehicle batteries to future interconnection technical working group agendas. Staff and stakeholders should discuss and determine how electric vehicles and the associated electric vehicle supply equipment and mobile inverters should be covered in the SIR. 
This work, of course, will be closely coordinated with the electric vehicle supply equipment and infrastructure proceeding just instituted by the Commission. That concludes my presentation. Bridget and I are happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Tammy. Um, I find this to be um, in the nature of a smart update. Um, I think. Flexibility of transparency, of protection of safety and reliability of the system, and of ratepayer protection. Um, I'll go further to say that I think it's testimony to the effectiveness of the interconnection working groups, the policy working group, and the technical working group, um, and uh, not just to the quality of the process, but importantly uh, to the uh, seriousness of the consideration of the issues that flows from that good process. This is, uh, to me, um, a well thought out, straightforward, good step forward, and I'm going to be in favor of it. Commissioner Sayre. This is one of several recent items that help keep REV moving forward. Our standardized interconnection requirements simply can't stand still. Some of the changes in this item are necessary because of our orders on the value of distributed energy resources. Some of them come out of the stakeholder process to improve the interconnection process, and still others are necessary to accommodate technological and market changes in areas like energy storage. I have absolutely no doubt that we will need more changes to the SIRs in the future as markets develop and technologies improve. Not every party agreed with every change in this item, and that's okay. That's what we're here for. We're here to consider all of the positions and find the result that best balances the public interest. These SIR changes required a great deal of hard work by staff and the interested stakeholders. I'm pleased to support them, and I echo the Chair's commendation to staff and the members of the working groups. Thank you, Commissioner Sayre. Commissioner Berman. Um, I have a couple of things. Uh, first, I want to thank um, you for um, your participation uh, at FERC uh, um, at the uh, conference. Um, you uh, um, you did a very good job, and uh, I appreciate it. Um, to the extent that um, this is talking about um, energy storage. Um, is there any particular, and we're making some changes, uh, is there any particular project or customer um, that we uh, are identifying that's currently affected um, that uh, will be, um, uh, ch uh, have any changes, um, or large customer or any particular large project that we envisioned will be um, immediately affected or shortly affected by this, or is this just uh, in the future? I'm just curious. So Right. So there's no um, customer that's particularly identified as being affected, but it will impact um, the configurations and the requirements for all energy storage projects going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then to the extent that the parties did mention um, a lot of different items that, uh, that we saw as outside of this petition, um, I do think it is important that we recognize, again, going back to um, my theme uh, on 301, is that looking at, um, you know, one thing does um, changes and one thing does affect um, the larger whole. And so in this, uh, while we're looking at the SIR, um, there are many things here that um, will affect the larger whole. And um, there has been uh, a number of um, uh, tension points, uh, and there continue to be uh, tension points. And that's why I think it's really important, the collaborative nature and working through that, but also um, us um, really being uh, um, um, able to identify the necessary um, uh, changes that need to happen and in, in looking um, ahead of the curve 
uh, and not seeing things in that silo. Um, and that really is kind of what I was uh, and really been trying to get at from a regulatory perspective is the need to align a lot of these proceedings in a way that helps us um, uh, to get to a more um, holistic approach. Um, you did talk about EVs, um, and you know I, I am glad in some ways to see here that there's a recognition um, that the, there is that petition. Uh, I am concerned that um, it seems to again be already um, <coughs> making a determination uh, ahead of it. Um, and we have not ruled on anything. We have just instituted a proceeding. And um, while we do have some um, EV uh, pilots out there, um, and while there was the 303 uh, BIR, um, we do need to be cognizant that there's instituting a proceeding is not the same as saying, yes, we're doing X. Um, and so to the extent that um, the Commission as a whole has not uh, adopted uh, any particular policy um, position. We need to be cognizant of that. But I do just want to take the opportunity also, since we talked about EVs, um, because I, I ended um, without saying it, uh, to Marianne, Chris, and to Warren. The three of you did do an excellent job um, in uh, your overall briefing. Uh, to me and here, and I did want to um, thank you for that, um, especially Marianne in particular, um, your uh, um, um, uh, consistent um, ability to uh, give pure facts uh, to me is very welcome. Uh, and I look forward to uh, your new role and just want you to know that um, uh, my uh, drilling uh, is in no way meant to, uh, um, to do anything except to cons let you know exactly what I'm interested in and uh, thank you very much for um, your consistent hard work and the three of you working together was very much appreciated. and. Uh, so thank you for that. So that's it. In case there's any miscommunication. Sorry. Thank you very much, Commissioner Berman. Commissioner Lisi. Thank you very much. We will now uh, proceed to call for a vote on item 302. My vote is in favor of the recommendation to approve the revisions to the SIR, including integrating energy storage technologies, accommodating the expansion of value of DER compensation for projects up to 5 megawatts, resolving several technical issues relating to project screening, and clarifying and enhancing the application process as described. Commissioner Sayre, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Berman, how do you vote? I concur. Commissioner Lisi, how do you vote? Yes. The item is approved and the recommendation is adopted. We will now move to the consent agenda. Do any of my fellow commissioners wish to recuse from voting on or from commenting on any items on the consent agenda? I do. Please, Commissioner Berwin. I just have to find my notes, sorry. It's a long list, so hold on. Sorry. Right. I'm kidding.
So I would just like to, uh, sorry, okay, thank you. Yes, please. So I would just like to note for the record that I will be concurring on items uh, 369, 371, 374, and 376. And I would just like to note for the record that on 376, I am concerned with some of the inconsistency uh, in our rationale um, and potential um, uh, uh, um, concern with the um, onerous being put um, on the developers um, and uh, concern on that. And then as to 374, um, I would just uh, like to flag that for um, uh, the um, utilities uh, to the extent that I think it is important um, that, they t that they very uh, much um, take note of uh, the need to uh, look at their dynamic load management programs um, and uh, make some determinations uh, on that. Um, and I do think it is important to realize that uh, depending on which utility you are, it is not a one-size-fits-all um, and that we do need to um, be very careful in how we um, look at uh, the management of our um, programs um, and understand that depending on uh, where the utility falls uh, and the, depending on the dynamics of um, the customers um, that it may um, uh, may not be able to be standardized uh, and then we may need to uh, examine that and that sort of that 374 sort of spoke to me in that way, and I think that's a very, very important uh, a lesson uh, to be learned um, from that. So, um, thank you. That's it. So, we will now move to a vote on the consent agenda with those um, uh, comments and clarifications. Uh, my vote is in favor of the recommendations on the consent agenda. Commissioner Sayer, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Berman, how do you vote? Um, I vote in favor except for where Those I said I would, that you yes. Made. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Commissioner Lisi? Aye. The items are approved and the recommendations are adopted. Secretary Burgess, is there anything further to come before us today? Excuse me, nothing further to vote on today. There is one other matter. There are two other matters. Two other matters for today. Thank you. So um, we, the votes we've just taken, we take with, with great seriousness and consideration. Um, and um, then we have other items that we simply do because it's the right thing to do and a pleasure to do so. So we have one colleague in the room who is retiring, um, and I'd like to read out a resolution of the New York State Public Service Commission um, regarding Mike Torgo. So you'll have to put up with us, sir. Whereas Michael Torgo has served the Department of Public Service, the Public Service Commission, and the citizens of the state of New York with great distinction since April 15, April 5, 1982, and whereas Michael Torgo, having first been appointed as a junior engineer, served the department in a variety of roles, including assistant utility engineer, senior valuation engineer, utility engineer three, utility supervisor, and currently as chief of electric rates and tariffs. And whereas Michael Torgo dedicated his career to ensuring just and reasonable rates for utility customers of New York State. And whereas Mike, Michael Torgo have brought his expertise and leadership to numerous rate proceedings, including filings for all major New York utilities, including New York State Electric and Gas Corporation, Rochester Gas and Electric Corporation, Central Hudson Gas and Electric Corporation, Consolidated Edison Company of New York, Inc., Orange and Rockland Utilities, Inc., the Long Island Power Authority, countless Niagara Mohawk Corporation firing, filings, as well as numerous small water companies and multiple municipal corporations. And whereas Mr. Turgo has led, has lead and supporting roles in a long list of projects 
and initiatives including Ray Case, executive sponsor in the most recent New York State Electric and Gas, Rochester Gas and Electric, and Niagara Mohawk Power Corporation rate proceedings, expert witness in the Guinea Reliability Support Services Agreement, expert witness in the eligibility criteria for energy service companies proceeding, lead staff involved in developing cost recovery for the clean energy standard, and whereas Michael Torgo shared his expert, technical expertise in insightful analysis through his thorough presentations in an untold number of meetings, briefings, and commission sessions during his tenor, tenure, and whereas Michael Torgo worked with his colleagues tirelessly and has earned the admiration and respect, well, let me emphasize, of Department of Public Service staff and the Public Service Commission and whereas Michael Twerga will be greatly missed by those who have worked with him each day, it is resolved that the New York State Public Service Commission expresses its deepest appreciation to Michael Twergo for his leadership in the Department of Public Service and his faithful service to the citizens of the state of New York as demonstrated by his unwavering commitment to the mission of the commission to ensure safe, secure, and reliable access to electric, gas, steam, telecommunications, and water services for all of New York's residential and business consumers. Are there any remarks? Well, yes. <laughs> in, in light of your 36 years of service, per, particularly concentrating on rates, I've been doing some rate making calculations. I, I estimate that, that you probably were involved on average in about five major rate cases a year over those 36 years, and you probably saved the rate payers on average about $100,000 in rates in each of those cases by your careful analysis and, and appropriate disallowances. That comes to $18 million, but the regulatory economists would, would uh, and, and as well as the Office of Electric Gas and Water, would would be quick to tell me that's nominal dollars that's not that's not today's dollars so i figured that on average uh you made these savings over a period of half of your term of service 18 years up to the present and on into the future in perpetuity and when i did those calculations as well as i was able i came up with a range in the billions of dollars <laughs> So stipulated. <laughs> now it's a shame we can't pay you on commission. See, one percent of two billion dollars. No, no, we can't do it, and I'm sorry about that. So, so I offer my best wishes and and my sorrow that we can't have paid you what you are actually worth to the state. Commissioner Burma. Um, Michael and I spoke privately, um, so I won't be um, long-winded here. Um, I'm really very sad that he is leaving. Um, it has um, uh, been a pleasure working with him, um, and um, he has been a great, great asset uh, to the department and to the state, and um, he can't be replaced. And um, we uh, are really going to miss him on a personal level and professionally, and um, we need more um, of you, and uh, we don't have you, and uh, it's a problem, and uh, I'm kind of angry, got to tell you, and uh, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy, and um, again, thank you very, very, very much for all that you've done. Uh, and the way that you've done it, um, you've been a true gem. So thank you. Indeed. We also have another colleague who's um, reached a similar point um, in his professional life. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I make oh, a yeah, few okay. comments? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt right, you. Please yes. do. Uh, 
when I saw you earlier in the corridor this morning, I didn't know whether to congratulate you or wish you well. I wasn't sure that this proclamation, or resolution, I should say, was uh, a surprise or not, but uh, so I kept mum on it. Um, as you know, generally, I don't speak a whole lot, but uh, in light of uh, Commissioner Sayers' comments about billions of dollars, um, I'm not sure any of us will get a chance to collect, but it's quite an incentive for me to live a little longer. Maybe we'll get it. Who knows? All kidding aside. Um, I can't give you any advice on retirement. I've done it three times already myself, so. Uh, <laughs> but I do wish you well, and thank you for your service to the state, to the commission, to the department. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lisi. As I mentioned, we do have another colleague, and uh, again, we have a resolution of the New York State Public Service Commission, this time for William Bill Saxonis. Where, and he's not here, so we can really be un, unconstrained. <laughs> um, whereas William Saxonis has served the Department of Public Service, the Public Service Commission, and the citizens of the state of New York with great distinction since September 21, 1995, and Whereas Mr. Saxonis, having first served in the State Energy Office for 15 years before coming to the department, was first appointment as an energy efficiency anal analyst, then served the department in, in a variety of roles, including energy e efficiency analyst for and utility supervisor and. Whereas Mr. Saxonis dedicated his career to energy efficiency in order to benefit all customers of New York State and. Whereas Mr. Saxonis brought his expertise and leadership to numerous proceedings, including those related to the system's benefits charges, including oversight of NYSERDA's SBC funding and evaluation matters, rate cases, demand response policies and programs, and energy efficiency, and generally to advance the clean energy policies for the benefit of all New Yorkers, and whereas Mr. Saxonis' work for the department was professional, well-developed, and of high quality, and reflected strong written communication skills and attention to detail. And whereas Mr. Saxon has worked with his colleagues tirelessly and has earned the admiration and respect of Department of Public Service staff and the of the Public Service Commission. And whereas Mr. Saxon, who is a renowned expert and lecturer on Duke Ellington, will now be able to spend more time listening and lecturing about the great music of Duke Ellington, it is resolved that the New York State Public Service Commission expresses its deepest appreciation to William Saxonis for his leadership in the Department of Public Service and his faithful service to the citizens of the state of New York as demonstrated by his unwavering commitment to the mission of the commission to ensure safe, secure, and reliable access to electric, gas, steam, telecommunications, and water services for all of New York's residential and business customers. In absentia, Bill. <laughs> and I have one more uh, item, uh, again, a serious one. Um, April is Safe Digging Month. Um, and it is um, essential to be mindful at all times of the importance of um, good practices, good safe practices, especially for excavators and contractors, when they dig in the state um, to make sure they do the right thing, which means to call one of the state's toll-free one-call centers be start before starting any excavation or digging project. And since it's important to be mindful of it all year long, it's especially important when we have a Dig Safely Month to um, take extra care, to pay attention to it, and spread the word. Um, this is a matter of life and death. Um, and uh, we don't need any of, any of the latter. Um, so please uh, do your best to spread the word and remind everybody um, it's very important. Thank you. With that, I adjourn uh, this session. Thank you very much.